So welcome back, everyone. I don't know about you guys, but hasn't this afternoon been absolutely amazing so far? And it's been um, inspiring, and the speakers have been amazing. Bree, Maisie, and I just had a quick chat, and um, we're so thrilled with the way it's going. One of the things Loranda spoke about was, you know, you are your brand, and you know creating your own brand and in this world of social media which is one of my passions because we do a lot of social media for dealers there's no two better people that i could think of when we were organizing ignite and talking about who we should have on two women in particular stood out who work in our industry and you know i think the biggest thing for all of us is how do we how do we figure our figure out our brand and what does it look like in this world of social media so i'm thrilled to have this conversation today and welcome both of them today they're influencers in our industry they've been progressive and trailblazers and have built a brand um, and are at the top of their game Heather Valentine, also known as Heather Lamborghini Gal. She's a sales specialist and entrepreneur from humble beginnings, making $13 an hour. Heather is now at the top 1% of luxury car sales in North America. Her pursuit of excellence, education, and you, you have such an interesting background, Heather. I can't wait to share it. All began in Arkansas, where she was inspired by her parents. She graduated from the University of Tulsa with a Bachelor of Arts in Musical Theater. And during university, she placed top 10 in the Miss Arkansas pageant and has helped use these awards to pay for her education. Following her musician father's passion, Heather moved to LA to pursue a career in music entertainment. She collaborated with musicians and artists and eventually became part of a band that opened for many major acts in 17 different countries around the world. Crazy. Every time I read this, I'm like blown away. Together with co-writer Larry Bartley and Grammy winning producer Pete Anderson, she created an album, The Cat's Meow. Throughout this time in LA, she juggled several all online businesses, modeled for pinup publications, and was an actress in network television shows, lifetime movies, and national commercials. This experience allowed her to cultivate the speed needed to become a motivational spokesperson, entertainment media mogul, and successful Lamborghini saleswoman. Saleswoman, I love it. She has filled this space with her journey to build an entertainment business and brands both new and traditional media. Overall, Heather's success as a sales guru and entrepreneur is the result of a determined mind and a growing entrepreneurial spirit. Whatever comes her way, she's driven to succeed. Heather, welcome and thank you for joining Ignite today. Thank you for having me. Just in case it goes dark, I'll log in from another computer. I'm on my laptop, my work laptop, but just in case I lose power, I'll be right back, guys. Just want to all good, all good. Jennifer Worsley. Jennifer, also known as Audi Please. She's a globally accredited Audi brand specialist, as well as a part-time cadet instructor with the Canadian Armed Forces. Jennifer began her automotive career six years ago, selling cars and currently works for Audi Brampton. The interesting thing, welcome Jennifer. The interesting thing about both these women is I've met both of you on Instagram. And Heather and I have not even met in person. No. So it's crazy the relationships that we can all draw through social media and grow them over time. And Jennifer and I talk all the time. It's like, you know, we're old friends that we've, we have this wonderful relationship together. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. So Heather, I'm going to start off with you. Um, and I want you to share a little bit about how you got exposed to the car industry because you have a very colorful background and now you're selling Lamborghinis. Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, so I grew up in the southern U.S. My dad is a car guy. Um, he always had a lot of American muscle in the garage growing up, usually eight to ten cars that he was restoring. And I used to get really pissed off as a kid because I wanted to drive them. I was like, Dad, 
why do we have all these and we can't drive them? And for him, they were investments, you know, he would restore them, sell them. Uh, some of them he still has and keeps for years, but um, that kind of sparked my interest in cars. And as soon as I was old enough to drive and make money, uh, of course, started buying cars and driving fast. So that's where it all started. <laughs> Jennifer, what about you? Mine was not as exciting as Heather's. Mine was honestly really random. Um, Meadowville Toyota was hiring right by my house and I was still, I was young, I was in college still working at McDonald's and my mom was like, hey, you should apply here. And I was like, you know what, it's walking distance, let's try it out. And I did, I got the job and from there, I just honestly fell in love with the automotive industry. So both you guys are influencers and you both have a huge following. Heather, you have 47,000 followers on Instagram and part of what we wanna talk about today is branding yourself and how you guys have done this. So Heather, I, I want you to, you know, it, social media is not new and specifically during COVID, we see the importance of it because people are spending more time on it. They're, you know, engaged more on social. We're all, we all have our phones in front of us. It's, it's stepping away from it sometimes, but talk to us about how that started from being in the car business. I know, I know you have a brand background of branding yourself, yeah. but talk to us how you became an influencer. So the goal was never to become an influencer and my top portal would definitely be YouTube. I'm at about 24 million views now on YouTube with I think somewhere around 150,000 subscribers. It's all organic. I've never paid for any of it. But what inspired me to do it, Miranda, was um, I'm a serial homebody and people don't know that about me, but I'm very social on social media and I love sales, but I honestly am the girl who comes home and puts her pajamas on and watches Netflix. Like I like to be home. So in the beginning of my career, I was out every night. I was parking cars in front of D bar or anywhere I could paying valets money to keep the Lambo right up front, buying guys drinks at the bars to network and build a clientele. And I thought this is exhausting. I'm gonna try social media. And it was back when nobody was doing it. Of course, I got tons of flack. They were like, that's stupid. You're wasting your time making videos and you know all this content. It's, it's costing you and you're never gonna see it return. So I got a lot of flack from everyone that I worked with, uh, management, other salespeople, but I, I took a risk and tried it and it's obviously paid off. I'm at a point now where I work by appointment only. I don't have a set schedule. I work when I want with who I want. And it's because of, you know, the social media and how much demand uh, I have. I just want to touch, you know, on one thing you said, we, we may have lost her uh, for a minute, but we'll go, we'll come back to that. Jen, Jen, talk to us about how you started, because I mean, coming from the armed forces and, you know, McDonald's and process is really driven in the McDonald's space. Yeah. But then you started at Audi Brampton and, you know, when you and I first met about two years ago, you said to me, it was a ton of work, social media out of the gate. Mm -hmm. So talk to us for those that may not, you know, I know everyone has a social media account this day and age, but talk to us about it for business and how we engage in it and how you made your, yourself successful personally branding yourself. For sure. So it was definitely quite a process. Like it started out when I was at Mercedes, I made the account because my manager said I wasn't passionate enough about the brand. So I was like, okay, how do I show I'm passionate about the brand? So I made, this was when I was a delivery specialist. So it was by no means for business at that point. It was just to post photos. So I started posting and I started getting a bit of a following. Like I remember my first time I got to a thousand, I was like, wow, like I have a thousand followers and it just slowly got bigger. But, but then I switched brands. So I went to Audi. And then I was a salesperson and my managers were like, well, why don't you try to use this to get people in the door? And I almost laughed, like, as if I could do that, that's never going to happen, but I'll try. I'll start posting photos using hashtags. And then it just grew and grew and grew. Remember it was one video of me and Wayne that didn't go viral, but just got a lot of attention, yeah. which grew the account bigger and bigger. And eventually I just had this following and I was able to use it to my advantage. So one thing that we see specifically when people are starting social accounts is they're nervous to get in front of the camera or get pictures of themselves or to do videos or talk about what they do or educate people. Talk to us about how we can overcome that because you have these amazing pictures of yourself and you, 
you're so authentic in the way you present yourself to your audience. So talk to us a little bit about how people can do that and what, what best practice people can take away from that. Yeah, for sure. I try to do a bit of everything and a bit of always something different. Like if you go to my account, you'll see it's almost by month by month, I switch themes or ideas. As I get a new idea, I'll just go with it. So for the longest time, it was just nails and keys, nails and keys. And it turned into heels and the Audi symbol and just something different all the time. Um, videos to this day still kind of scare me, like to actually post a video because I have a hard time coming up with things to say. But I've always find photos so easy because you can just shoot them off and get different ideas consistently. And, you know, when, when it comes to your teammates, you get your teammates very involved in, in everything that you do on social. And we almost get to go through that journey of building a relationship with them. How important is that? Oh, my team's the best. They've always been so supportive with all of this, to either taking the photos, taking the photos with me, or just giving me ideas. Sometimes they'll come in and have something on their phone and be like, Jen, you should do like an image like this and we'll do it together. And it's definitely important to have your, coll like your colleagues having your back because they support you through the whole thing. As a brand specialist, how do you balance personal versus professional content and that's one of the questions that you know is always that fine line because you are representing audi or you know all of us are re representing companies or brands and it's drawing that fine line how do you do that and what goes through maybe you can walk us through the process of what that looks like yeah a hundred percent that's probably sometimes one of the hardest things because i do love instagram in general so to make sure i'm posting things strictly for audi and being careful like not posting a video with a bunch of beers and throwing it online because everyone can still see that and that can like haunt you for lack of a better word. Um, but yeah, like I just, I have like my close friends that you can have like an account for and keep everything private and just try to keep things as professional as I can, not post political, not post anything that could get me in trouble at the end of the day. Because like you said, I am representing Audi. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's one of the biggest things, even with Heather, I mean, Lamborghini, so many years of investing in the brand, they're very particular with guidelines and it's how do you drive that fine line? So I want to hear more on what, when Heather touches on, um, you know, what that looks like when it comes to brand guidelines, because she did mention she does get, she did get a lot of flack out of the gate. So, you know, I think it's, you know, when we touched on personal branding and working for a brand like Audi, and, you know, Heather touched on Lamborghini and getting a lot of flack out of the gate. There, she's back. I'm back. Heather, welcome back. Um, so right before you left, Heather, we talked about, you know, the manufacturer giving a lot of flack on personal branding and controlling, you know, what you guys do and, and how what that looks like. Can you touch on that, on how that evolved over time when they saw your success? Yeah, so it wasn't the manufacturer. It was just people in general that I work with, um, my managers. They just saw me investing a lot of time in it, and they thought it was going to be a waste of time. They wanted me to just focus on selling cars. But the intent was to not have to run around all over town and leverage my own personal brand with the Lamborghini brand so that I would just get the leads that way. And um, it started working. I started getting lots of calls lots of e emails, DMs. Um, it's at a point now, I don't even look at that stuff or check it. I hired someone who handles all of it and he sends me all the legitimate leads and it's fantastic. I'm busy every day if I want to be. Um, and now obviously they're all fans and so many salespeople have tried to do what I do, emulate it and create their own branding that way. So it, it was early on and I took a risk. I got flack in the beginning, but it worked out to uh, the benefit of myself and the dealership. So how many cars would you say specifically each of you sell based on social media and branding yourselves a year? If you can put a number on that. I would say for me, uh, I did seven cars last week alone, just for instance. And um, for me, I don't do any walk-ins or ups. I'm at an appointment only uh, basis. So mine are repeat clients, referrals, or social media. So I would say at least 40 to 50% are all social media. That's amazing. And what about you, Jennifer? Mine, I'm definitely not on Heather's level. Uh, I'm getting about two people, I would say leads off of Instagram per month. And I can usually turn about one of those into a sale per month. But I'm still depending on foot traffic and all of that. Growing your audience can be tough this day and age organically. Um, you know, we see that with dealing with dealers. What are you guys doing to grow that engagement, 
continue to grow your audience? How do you get new people following you? How do you get new customers? Heather, maybe you can touch on that first. Sure. So um, I don't I don't want to sound arrogant, but I sell Lamborghini, which one is is one of the top brands in the world, and it automatically draws an audience. So then you tie that with a blonde. I think it it helps and. Um, I don't really have to try. I've never spent money on it. I've never advertised on social. It just organically grows. And word of mouth is amazing. Um, I think I would have to give all the credit to my assistant because he comes up with all the content, the photos, the videos. He plans everything I do. And uh, without him, I would be lost. So I'm really just the face and I'm the closer. But he's the content creator. He's the one coming up with what we post and I think that's invaluable because he obviously knows what's on trend and what we need to be posting to help grow that audience. Jennifer, do you want to touch on that? You're you're probably gonna say, you know, I have a long way and you know I I don't know if you have an assistant or not, but um touch on that as well. Yeah, I try kind of with what Heather said on staying current, like our assistant tries to stay with the current themes. So whatever's going on, whatever there's different themes or challenges, I always try to join that. Because just hashtags and doing those themes can definitely get you a following, even if it's only a couple hundred each time. How do you guys come up with content? Like, I know, Heather, you said you have someone that kind of helps you with that, but you have such a background on branding. How do you guys come up with daily content and ideas to make sure that you're constantly putting yourself out there? I mean, Heather, you you deal with probably some really interesting clients in, in the market that you work in. And I'm sure you could, I'm sure you have a million stories to share, but maybe you, you, what's that? I could write a book. I'm, I'm sure. And you already have, but you know, can you share with us what that looks like? Because you are dealing with a totally elite clientele and you know, what you see on every given day must be different. I mean, you were talking to me last week about, getting cars over across into Europe and, you know, in different ways and not putting them on, you know, a boat across the Atlantic kind of thing. So we'd love to hear some of your stories. Yeah. So um, the question, the content. So I do discuss with my assistant ideas. Um, He's really good about coming up with like bullet points. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? Um, I'm a very strong personality. I won't do something that I don't believe in or like. So he runs the ideas by me. We chat about it and we decide what's best for the channel, the brand, and ultimately to help sell cars. Um, We never do anything that makes me in a a bad light. Like I'm not into like prank videos or any of that stuff that people do, the gold digger videos and that sort of thing. Even though I have access to those kind of cars, I always want it to be reputable and professional. So um, we try to stay within those guidelines. Otherwise, we could have millions of followers if we'd be willing to do that stuff. Um, So that kind of answers that portion. As far as my clientele, I deal with the uber rich, uh, lots of celebrities, CEOs, entrepreneurs. Um, You know, the cheapest thing I sell is like 350,000 and up. So, uh, you know, I've done cars that are 4 million. I've you know, spec very limited edition cars, one of 20 in the world. Um, so I deal with the uber rich. And um, I think with Lamborghini and people that buy Lamborghini, they're actually just down to earth people. And I don't put on airs. I don't wear suits. I don't talk formal with them. I'm very down to earth by nature. And that's exactly how I deal with them. And they're like a friend that, you know, I'm helping them spec their dream $4 million car. And uh, I do get a lot of social media uh, people, clients wanting to buy from me because of the YouTube channel and Instagram. And I do sell pre-owned vehicles all over the world. So, um, but I, regardless of how wealthy they are, I mean, everybody that knows my story knows I came from a farm. I was up at 5 a.m. doing chores. I started in the car business nine years ago, making 13 bucks an hour. So I wasn't where I am now. And a lot of them weren't either. So they just like to be treated like normal people. You know, there's a lot of, you know, cliche about women and cars and you're at the top 1% when it comes to luxury sales. 
Do you ever experience people coming to buy with you, buy from you and you're a female and you know, what does that look like? And I want you both to answer that. Maybe Heather, you can go first because that's something what, why we're doing what we're doing today. Yeah. So, uh, being a female in the beginning, I had a lot of flack. People said, Oh, you don't know anything about cars. You just shake your TNA in front of people to get a deal. So that made me work even harder. I spent hours with the mechanics in the back. I would buy them coffee. I wanted to know the cars inside and out. I wanted to be better than anyone, man or woman doing what I do. And when people call me, at you know one in the morning with an emergency I know exactly what to tell them to fix the problem so I spent hours and and lots of time just becoming the best and really knowing my product inside and out and I don't know if everyone knows but I actually can sell eight brands I, I can sell Bugatti I can sell Rolls Royce I can sell Aston Martin Bentley I mean the list goes on and on but I chose to specifically specialize in Lamborghini. I wanted to do one thing and be the best at it and be known for that one thing. And I still sell the other brands, but I get the product specialist for those in, those brands and those deals involved to do the delivery. Um, but this way, no matter what, man, woman, it doesn't matter. I'm the expert when it comes to Lamborghini. So um, it ended up, once I did that and I sort of became known and my name became synonymous with the Lamborghini brand, yes, people sought me out and they book appointments with me all the time now because they want to deal with me. And I think, you know, 99% of my clients are wealthy men and they love that I'm a Southern woman and I have that femininity and I can give them opinions regarding their custom interiors and, you know, color combinations and whatnot. So they actually really like the fact that I'm a woman. I think initially I had to prove myself, but nowadays that's a thing of the past. And um, I'm grateful to have the clients I have. And I think being a woman, if anything, sets me apart. Yeah, you know, I've worked with many women throughout the auto industry, and they've always been at the top of their game, they invest in themselves, they grow, they're knowledgeable. And it's, it's so amazing. And I think that speaks to all the speakers today on everyone investing in themselves to be at the top of their game. Jen, do you want to touch on that question too? Because I think it's important coming from you as well. Yeah, for sure. I've always thought being a woman in the automotive actually helped me sell cars because I find a lot of women come in and they want to deal with a woman. And not a lot of dealerships actually have a female sales rep. So having that and giving them, they'll look on the website ahead of time and strictly come to that dealership because there's a female rep they can deal with. So I definitely think that helps out. Heather, I want to, I want you to touch on if you were to give advice to people that just started in the industry or want to look at creating a brand for themselves, what type of advice would you give them? So just starting in the industry, obviously, uh, you need to hone your skills as a closer, especially if you want to one day make it to a super luxe level. That is, you know, one of the most important skills. Um, I think you can do that with integrity. That's what I try to do, where I really know my clients. I really get to know my clients. I know their wives' names. I know their kids' names. I know their birthdays. I, I really know them. And I have roughly now about 700 repeat clients in, um, in this, this uh, province. So I've built that over a long period of time. But um, I think when you're starting out, obviously, uh, working somewhere high volume, uh, where you can interact with a lot of people, you can learn how to close. I mean, those are all very good things that you're going to need to know later. Then you're going to become confident enough to develop your own style. And once you become a really great closer and you're doing, you know, astronomical numbers, then you can start setting up your lifestyle the way you want. Like me, where I don't work a schedule. I work whenever I want, you know, whatever days I want. And um, that's when you get the luxury of freedom and flexibility. Uh, but starting out, just get your foot in the door. I started at Tesla making 13 bucks an hour with no commission. It was pretty brutal work conditions, but I was passionate about the product and I gained a lot of experience. That's so great. And what about you, Jen? If you can touch on that, that would be awesome. Uh, I would definitely just say being genuine when you're first starting out and just taking in everything that you can learn. So I remember when I first got in, I found it so overwhelming because I knew the basics about cars, but 
anyone who first gets in this business, it's just so much thrown at you at one time and trying to like what Heather said, how she went to the back and learned from the text. I remember I did that once and just taking in all that information because sure I have to sell it, but to be able to answer that call and no answers about details just really, really helps you out. And just when you don't know, be honest, like the amount of times I just sit someone down and learn with them something that they were asking me. I don't see any harm in that rather than trying to fake it. If I can say one thing, I was a hustler. I was an immigrant to this country. I knew nobody. And I would literally grease the text with cash to send me leads. So you got to be, you got to think outside the box. Like, yeah, do social media, but it doesn't hurt to develop and cultivate relationships where people are on your side because, you know, I is never as good as we and a big team makes the difference. Yeah, I, I agree with you. You know, it, it, it's crazy. Like I, I remember going out to general, the General Motors plant when I first started sent, selling newspaper ads and I go at four in the morning and hand out newspapers to the GM workers. And it's amazing. You know, you look back at that now and you go, that was crazy. But at the time you were doing everything to learn everything about your audience and your career and your industry. So, you know, I think we all started somewhere for sure. And, you know, it's, you enjoy the fruits of your labor years, years later. There is a dark side to social media. And when you're an influencer, I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie, The Social Dilemma, but it exposes a totally different side to the industry. But when you're an influencer, you get the good, the bad, the ugly. Can you touch on if you're seeing any negativity because you have so much engagement and followers? Or is, you know, um, what does that look like for you guys? Heather, we'll start with you. Yeah, so in the beginning, I used to read every comment and I would reply to every comment. It would take me hours. Um, this was pre-assistant days. And... Um, I'm pretty lucky because my following is organic. So most of them are very positive, but there's always a few that are just nasty trolls and they, you know, they can't help themselves. Um, I decided at, at one point when things were really taking off to hire my assistant Mark and he's been amazing. Hiring him was the best thing I ever did. Uh, he manages and handles all of it. And I think though, even before that, when you're not at that level yet, just let it roll off because you know, when 99% of it is good, you're doing something right. And you just have to understand that that's part of being in the public eye and don't let it affect you. Um, and don't feel bad about calling them out or responding. It's amazing how sometimes when you will reply, they change their story very quickly and they just want attention. Right, right. And what about you, Jennifer? Uh, I haven't ever had anything too, too bad, but I have, I remember like small things, like when I took a video while driving, someone called my general manager and said I did that. Or even as small as just not liking a post, I just block people. <laughs> like when they say rude things, I don't really have time for that. Like I just block them and move forward because what am I going to do? But it definitely yeah. happens. Let it roll. Yeah, that's, that's good advice. Let it roll. I think that's something all women can learn to do better, right? Is kind of just move forward and, and not worry about all the noise. I think that's so crucial this day and age. I'm going to shift gears a little bit because I want to talk about social media and bringing, you know, your personal lives into it. Heather, I notice you don't bring a lot of your personal life into your social media, but I see tidbits sometime, yeah. including your son, Talk to us a little bit about that strategy, because it's hard not to share your whole authentic self, including kids, because people want to know about that and want to see it. They do. And I, they ask. And I think a little bit is fine. Uh, it shows that you're human and they obviously want to buy more cars from you the more they know and the more they like you. I mean, uh, so it doesn't hurt. But I am also a very private person and like I said, a serial homebody. So I, I don't really feel the need to put too much on. Occasionally I want to share something because a lot of my clients are dear friends now. They've been buying Lambos from me for nine years. And, um, you know, that is a way that we communicate without having to text every single one of them or call. So I do put up minimal things and, um, just when I feel like it, I, I don't have any real set guideline. Um, my assistant obviously chimes in 
and gives me his opinions about everything, <laughs> which I appreciate. But um, there's no real plan. It's just I keep mainly the content focused on the brand, the product, and selling. And then occasionally I throw a little tidbit out there. Who's your favorite person to follow on social media, Heather? I'm interested. Oh, my God. My favorite. That, that's tough. Um, boy, you threw me with this one. Because I, I don't even watch social media now. Like, honestly, Mark does it all. He does all of it. Um, and I rarely follow someone back. And it's not personal. It's just um, I'm not on there. I'm not looking at it. I honestly started it for sales. I do, when my clients message, my assistant tells me, hey, so-and-so's messaging, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to actually respond to this myself. But um, following, oh, gosh, um, I'd have to think about that. I, I don't you even can know. think about that. I'll let Jennifer weigh in because uh, – Jennifer, you know, I she's had this wonderful fitness journey over the last kind of eight months. And, you know, I don't know if you want to share a little bit, but you put out there, um, you know, just your whole journey with, um, you know, working out and a whole different side than just being in a car dealership. So share with us that little personal piece, because I know for some, you just share with pers close friends, like you'll change the setting to close friends. So share with us a little bit on that piece of it. Yeah, I definitely share quite a bit of my personal life on social media, like nothing personal, personal, but like you said, fitness and like if I'm doing things with the military, I'll share it because at the end of the day, I'm trying to show that I don't just sell cars like I do have a whole life outside of automotive and try to sell like my personality and myself on social media along with the brand, which I found always help because I can get that many more clients through that if I hashtag fitness and things like that, I'll gain another following. But I really reach out to all of that. Yeah. Where do you think social media will go? Where do, where do we go from here? Um, you know, Heather, maybe you can weigh in on what that looks like or where the world's going from, because I um, think. Through yeah, go ahead. It's, it's crazy what's happening with virtual influencers and things that companies are doing. I mean, it, it, who knows? But um, I definitely think that is the way to advertise nowadays. The, the hard copy stuff, the old, you know, ads on the radio, all that's done. That's done. It's social all the way. Um, we have a few questions that came in and I want to, I want you guys to answer them. What are five things you can't live without? Jennifer, you first. This is like the, the, the round where you have to get questions thrown at you and you have to answer them. Oh man, five things. Okay. Uh, coffee. Like I'm obsessed with caffeine and coffee. Fitness. <laughs> My mom. <laughs> Friends and then family, I guess. Does that work? That works perfectly. Heather? My son, my common law partner. Uh, yes, we're actually in love. Um, health is huge for me. Flexibility and freedom. I cannot work in a corporate environment with a schedule. I just, I can't do it. So that's huge for me. And uh, the people around me, my team, because uh, you really need the right people around you to be successful. Most common question you get on social media, Jennifer. Oh my God, do you want to know what it is? Like, do you come with the car? Does that work? Everyone loves to say that. Heather? Will you marry me? Well, there's some commonality there. That's a good thing. What do you drive in your spare time? Heather? I take Lambos home anytime I want. I, uh, so obviously if I need a fix, I take home a Lambo. Obviously a naturally aspirated V12 is the choice, but often it's the Urus because I can take my dogs, I can take my baby, you know, I can load it up and still continue on with my regular life. Jennifer. I'm currently driving an A4 wagon, the Allroad. <laughs> What's the most interesting thing people may not know about you? And this doesn't have to be related to social media. Heather. Well, I've said it a few times in this interview, but I'm actually a homebody. So most people don't think that about me. They see me dressed up and on social and they think I'm a super socialite. I also don't drink. In the car business and doesn't drink. <laughs> That's but I cuss. I cuss like a sailor. I'm really bad about that. And I'm trying to get better because I have a two-year-old. Yeah, that's right. That's good. That's a good, uh, good thing. Jennifer. 
Uh, probably that I was a competitive shooter for about six years and coached Team Canada. I've been shooting all over the world. So that's pretty, my main thing. So don't piss her off. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, I want to ask a question that just came through. I recognize that both of these women have expressed having gone over and above what men in this industry do in order to be successful. What would they change about the industry to help break down these barriers for other women, which is a fantastic question. And you know what, Heather, I'm going to start with you. I just think it's any industry. You can't make assumptions about people. I mean, we had a lot attendant. He went from being a lot attendant to being a Lamborghini salesperson. Like who does that? So woman or man, it doesn't really matter. You can't make assumptions about people's personalities. And, um, you know, when you give women a hard time, they're going to work 10 times harder to get to the top. And I think that can also go for men. But um, I just think people need to have more of an open mind. Like when I first started, they just assumed I knew nothing about cars. And, you know, all I was looking for was a paycheck, not knowing my background or that I had a passion for driving and cars. And I just think you can't make assumptions, even with clients that, you know, when I used to take walk-ins, there was a guy, for instance, that showed up in a minivan with six kids. And my coworker was like, oh, I don't want to talk to him. I sold him an Aventador S, which was like a $600,000 car. So, you know, it's that old saying, you can't judge a book because um, you never know what people are capable of. Really great answer. Thank you for sharing that. And I agree with you. You know, you can't judge a book by its cover because you never know what's inside for sure. Jennifer, do you want to touch on that as well, that question? Because I think that's an important one. And that's one, you know, you've always supported um, women in our industry and, and as, has have a passion for it. And I think it's a great thing because you're you're only six years new to the car industry, but you've kind of embraced that and you've made a, you've made a big impact on a lot of women in our industry. Yeah, I honestly just wish more women would apply. I don't think they realize how great this industry really is in being in sales because they see it so male dominated that they think they don't have a chance, they don't want to apply. But really, women do amazing in this industry. Almost every woman I know in sales kills it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if they would just apply, they'd probably get in and just start and work their way up and reach out to people like me or Heather, or other people, your, yourself, like all of us and see how we can help them and get them in. I think there are maybe they don't think they have an interest in cars. And it is important to have a passion for what you do. I mean, anyone can sell anything if they're a salesperson at heart, but you wanna like what you're selling. So I've rarely met women that love cars. There's a few, but they're far and few between. Uh, but Jennifer's right, you know, if they're just looking for a great career in sales, they should open their mind to automotive because, um, the possibilities are amazing for women in this industry. Yeah, you know, I had a dealer say to me not too long ago, it's amazing when he used to walk into the mall and see all these women working retail, making an hourly wage, and he didn't understand why they didn't come and apply at a car dealership because they would make that much more money. And, you know, part of it is ours, and I think we have to change that culture. And, Heather, you're a, you're a product of that. You create your success, and then you get to a point where you can control your own schedule and your own clients. And I think that's everyone's yeah. goal in this business. So yeah, when you start out in the car industry, I mean, they want you, like, nine to nine. And that's really unreasonable for most women, especially, like, someone like me that's a mom now. But, um. When I was younger, I could do it, uh, but I just knew I had a goal to do it on my own terms. And all you really have to do is become the best. And trust me, they'll give you whatever you want to have you. Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, does anybody have any questions, other questions that come through on the chat um, to, to ask Heather or Jennifer? I can keep going. I can keep going for days here with you guys because I... I'm so impressed in what you do. And I know you have a hard stop, Heather, but if anybody has any questions, feel free. Ladies, what is one thing that you guys do to take care of yourselves? Like, I know we talked about working out and, you know, what's one, we work a lot of hours in this business. And on top of that, when you're creating social content, it can be a full-time job. Heather, I know you're a little bit excluded there with Mark helping you so much. But, but what are you doing a lot of hours? 
what are the some of the things that you guys do you know a lot of the speakers spoke about journaling and meditation and taking care of oneself but i want to hear what you guys specifically do because you're both at the top of your game and i think it's a, an important part of the conversation for sure so heather we'll start with you okay so for me balance is huge it's very hard for me i tend to be a workaholic you know if i don't pick up the phone i could easily lose ten to twenty thousand dollars from missing one call. So it's very hard for me to set boundaries, but I have to do it. Today I'm supposed to be on vacation, but obviously I've been working all morning. So it's just very hard, but you really have to try. I think COVID has made it harder for me because I can't just go away to a deserted island like I normally do three times a year. I have to literally just be home and it's hard for me not to work, but you gotta try set balance. I Peloton. Uh, I just bought one of those massive gallon water bottles from Amazon because I'm really bad about drinking water. I tend to drink way too much coffee. So I'm trying to implement that into my life, more water. Uh, fortunately, I have an amazing uh, personal trainer here as my hubby. So uh, he cooks amazing healthy meals for us every night. So I come home to like dinner already made. And uh, he helps me out, obviously, if I want training. So I'm lucky in that respect. But um I think the main thing I would push is, you know, when you become very successful and very busy, you got to find balance because it, it will just wear you down, be you down to nothing, you know, and then you won't be successful. Right. I agree with you. And what about you, Jennifer? Uh, one of the big things I actually changed last year is I don't come in on my day off anymore. I will stay late any day and I'll come in early any day, but I need my days off. Working with the military and having Audi, I used to just come in anytime someone asked, I'd bend over, no problem, here I am, here I am. But you burn out, like you seriously burn out. And finally I was like, you know what, no more. Like when I'm off, I'm off and I work out, I do my thing and I have a social life. Otherwise I just make myself crazy. Yeah, that's, that's so important. I mean, to get that balance and that outlet to, you know, do things that are going to pull you away from work because it's totally consuming. I find, you know, I'll, I'll st sit in front of Zoom for eight hours a day this day and age. And I actually miss walking in dealerships and having really bad coffee. It's good now, but really bad coffee seven times a day with dealers. Um, so yeah, that's something I really miss of it. Ladies, thank you. It, you know, it was, it was good to have a conversation with you, Heather. It was great to finally have a longer conversation with you. I know we've had a few and Jen, as always, it's always great speaking with you and catching up with you, but you guys are, you guys are trailblazers. You guys are able to look up to from a social media perspective and we're excited what, what's down the road for you guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And uh, nice to virtually meet you, Jennifer and you, Miranda. Thank you. Yes, be well. Thank you. Thanks, guys. That was amazing. So many wow. good tidbits in there. It was so nice to hear everybody's background story and just, you know, the luxury world. It's so different. Isn't it awesome to see two girls just killing it? Just crushing it. Yeah. You know, and talking to people behind the scenes and that's the stuff that you don't see on the surface, but it's so important and it's so true is that you have to build the foundation for yourself sometimes. Yes. Someone just sent a message saying you both were so inspiring. So um, that was the goal today at the beginning of this all that to leave people inspired. So thank you for that. And thank you for being transparent and sharing, sharing everything with us. Thank you, guys. I'm going to sign off. i got to get on another Skype, but have a great day, okay? And thank Be you. Be well. Plug well, that computer in. Yeah, I know. Oh, my God. My uh, cord's at work. I cannot believe I forgot it. I, it's, the lighting's terrible here, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I see ya. Thanks for watching my video, guys. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit that like button. I'll be releasing new videos every week and I can't wait to have you along for the journey.